Hello, it's Sarah. And we're back. And the next, I've come back to my pieces are base coated. Some colors took three coats. Uh, I put two on the, the hair, ended up needing two. Um, I think I have three on this little starfish, and it still seems a little um, splotchy, but um, I put stickles over it, and I, you know, once you highlight and shade, it'll be okay. Um, I did go back in and trace afterward now. I traced the uh, other starfish in her hair. I put her little face on. Now, if you look at your original tracing, that's not what the face looked like, but I changed it. I just did my little face. Let's see. She just has these round eyes and the little mouth and nose, and I just put little eyelids on her kind of so you can put those little round eyes and then you just put a little swirly line over it and it'll give her give her little eyelids just gives it a little more definition um to the face i still have a cold so hopefully we'll get through this okay um we're gonna come over to this piece for a minute i'll put her aside and i want to talk about the daisy this um is a mixture this center color of white plus the light brown and you can tell on here I missed the spot and I went back into the paint and I got a little bit that was more brown than white which I'm fine with because by the time we're done putting all the details on here I don't think that's going to show um, for the bees I mixed white and yellow and it definitely um, covers better it covers I think this still might be three coats and they're still looking a little splotchy but what we're gonna start shading and highlighting and you'll see how that gets covered up uh, the white definitely takes a couple coats this is at least three and the green only took two um, so the first thing I want to do right now is we're gonna get these bees wings covered and what we're gonna do with that is called a wash and a wash is it's a bit it's a coat of paint that's basically um sheer it is see-through you want it to be see-through so we're gonna create a wash this way and i'm just using my big white because instead of playing with the paint pots i've been a little bit uh messy today so i'm kind of trying to stay out of messes and my nose is stuffy um okay i'm gonna use my flat again and we want to cover this area and when you do it you can go uh, I'm thinking if we need this line here right now I think I'm gonna erase that I'm gonna erase this line in the middle because once we put paint over it you won't be able to get it off there again and we are gonna cover it when you see how I mean, you probably won't be able to see that line under there, but why not erase it? I'll just show you. If you were going to be doing a, a a real, you know, a nice piece, you don't want these lines to show and mess up your work. So I'm just erasing those for now. I'm so sorry. My nose is stuffy. And we're going to go ahead and make a wash. So what I've done is on my palette, I've put a little daub of paint. And I'm going to go into my paint bucket. Let's do this over here where you can see the whole thing. Into my paint bucket and I'm getting, I'm loading my brush and I'm moving. Now actually I've changed my water by the way. Heads up. I've cleaned my water. Because you don't want to do this with dirty water necessarily. Because then my white might not look so white. <coughs> go into the paint. Then come right over here and pull a puddle. Like we've been doing. But now I'm creating a really wet, wet, wet puddle. It's probably going to end up being 75 water to 25 paint. I'm not positive. And it takes a minute to play with it and see what you're going to end up with. But I'm still just creating this puddle. I'm, I haven't gone into my paint anymore. I'm just working with what I pulled off my brush and this paint. And that looks like a nice little puddle. So you know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try it. Okay. I'm going to put the brush down and get as much off as I can. But I'm going to rinse my brush before. And now we're going to load like we were to base coat. We're just going to tap, blot. And now my brush is ready. I'm going to come and I'm just going to load and pick up some of this Kirby. 
I don't want to play. Pick up some of this color, this paint that I just made, this wash. I'm loading my brush now with that. Going to come over to my wings and just like we always do, put it right in the middle and just base this whole area. And what's going to happen is when it dries, it's going to be sheer and ghosty looking. Like it's just going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit of color, like a bee's wing is sheer, you know? So it gives the illusion that, uh, and we're going to shade and highlight it. So there's color there, see, but it's very, very sheer. We're going to come over here and I'm going into this, what I made before, pick it up and put it down in the middle and do the same thing. The, the same way we base coated, just push it around up against the edges. Move kind of quickly because if you pity pat in this, you could leave holes. Kirby, she's pushing on my elbow. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. Now I just went right over those lines, so that's going to show. I I think I should try to stay inside the lines more. I think I'm going to just take a Q-tip. Why not? I'm being a little particular, but the thing is, I want you guys to know what your what your uh, uh, options are. If that happens, what you can do. So there, that I like. And then for the last one, I'm just going picking up the rest of that color that I made and I'm going to do these two wings same way as we did when we base coated put the color down spread it around up against the body and stop like you don't want to pity pat in it too much because by this wing my my paint might be getting more being a little uh less water than paint so but it, it wasn't it was fine all right i'm leaving that to dry now we're going to just let it set and dry and we're going to go back to our mermaid but that's a wash can you see that it's on there it's still wet but it's just a sheer coat of white and that's all the technique calls for so i'm going to set that aside let it dry and go get my um my mermaid so she's all base coated you know what i did want to go over um how to get this uh, orange color that I did for my, I'm going to use my little, uh, what should I use? I'm going to use my liner. The liner is similar to the round because it is a round brush, but you can flatten it out too and get more area covered. So I'm going to just take some orange on my brush, put it right next to this white and just put, pick a little bit of white up and I'm brush mixing this. So I'm making it into a little bit of a peachy color. I don't know, what color is that? Is that peach? Yeah, it's kind of peach. And then I'm just going to go right to my piece with what's on my brush. Because um, I can't really see. Oh, there we go. See, with your liner, you can just draw it in basically you know just go over fill that little area and give her a little see starfish I want to call this so many different things it's a starfish Sarah okay so there we go Whatever. It's a weird shaped starfish. That's for sure. I'm so sorry. My nose is stuffy and I'm sick, but all right. And it's got some ridges in it, but again, I put stickles on this and we're going to shade and highlight it. So don't worry too much about just get some coverage on there and then rinse your brush. And we're going to go and try to do some shading. Now this is, this is the big deal about this. This is called floating. Um, I'm going to pause and come back. My nose is so to shade and highlight, we're going to be using our paper palette. This thing that I've said we might be able to try it on our Tim Holtz thing here, our craft mat. <clears throat> I'm going to try that. And this is when we're going to need our angle brush. You can float as well with a flat brush, but my preference is an angle brush. And I'll show you why. Because you know how I like working with those, um, with the chiseled edge of the brush. You can get into those nooks and crannies. I just like the way a chisel brush, 
I have that tip there. I don't know. Now this is the big one. I'm using the 5 8 inch and it doesn't matter how big it is based compared to how small the piece is because I can use as much or as little of it as I want. And you're working with water. I'm going to go ahead and do it and then I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. All right. So that you can kind of understand easier I need I'm the type of person when I'm learning something I need to I can read it see it and hear it like I need all the input to help me so you know what I want to do real quick too before we start is erase all these tracing lines that are on the outside of her just that anything that's hanging around uh, that looks like it could be erased and if it doesn't get erased it'll come off either get covered by paint or um, like I said there's mineral spirits but it seems to be coming off pretty good with the eraser. Sometimes you might have gone over the line with your uh, paint and you can't really tell. And that's what's why the eraser is not taking it off. So just be careful that I just went over that uh, starfish and, I'm, and he's wet. <laughs> Alright, so that pretty much looks good. I'm just kind of getting in there up against the... Uh, edge of the paint uh, painted piece okay I'm just gonna take my piece aside and wipe it off <sighs> wipe off all that uh, eraser erasage stuff clear my surface here <clears throat> all right so I'm pretty happy with that that looks pretty good so we're gonna shade first and to that for that I'm just gonna use this dark green so I'm just gonna take a little bit Oh, it's very, you know what? I left this open the other night when I went upstairs. Look, there's a whole little dried goop on top. And that's fine because, uh, that's what I mean. It gets a film on top and you can just break through that and there's wet paint underneath. So I still have plenty of paint under here. So that's a good thing. I'm gonna, I don't need nearly that much paint, but I'm gonna put a little puddle on my palette. It's a lot of peas. I'm going to clean off my palette knife and stick it in the water like I always do. And I'm going to talk about how we load the brush and we're going to play over here for a minute. Um, again, it's this process of going from water to, to paper towel to paper palette. So we're going to go back and forth, back and forth. Every time you load your brush, you want to do this process. And whatever it looks like on here after you've loaded your brush that's what you're going to get when you go to your piece so you want to make sure you like what you're seeing on your paper palette before you go to your piece or it's you know there's no point in putting it down so we're going to grab some water get some water in your brush like i kind of rake it across and then kind of go like that and get that drip off then i blot okay one side blot corner load so if you're using a flat brush pick a corner either corner doesn't matter I pick the pointy corner on here and I'm picking up the paint that's quite a bit of paint on there okay but I'm gonna put it down on my paper palette and I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna walk away from it or into it depending on if I need more on my brush I'll show you what I mean I'm gonna put it down and I'm kind of I'm gonna try and move slow it's hard for me I'm such a fast mover <clears throat> and back and forth I go and what's happening is I'm either pushing into the color which I am now I'm gonna get more I'm gonna get more paint put it down and you can see I'm gonna try and zoom in and see what you can see when you zoom in let's see if it gets focused <laughs> because what you want to do is um, you're kind of trying to figure out water to paint and you don't want you want it to be equal so you don't want bubbles over here that means there's too much water in your brush I'm gonna back up I just don't know I don't know if that was because there are some bubbles here but here's what we're doing we're trying to go from dark to water I don't want paint on this edge of my brush at all I only want water and that's what you use the mop for to mop the water up so this is what I'm doing. I'm floating the paint across my brush, across the water. It's floating across the bristles. And when you go to your piece, you're going to use all these bristles on the surface, not just the tip, 
because what's the point of that? That's only paint. I need water to get to, so I'm going to go to my piece and I'm going to show you what I mean. My brush is loaded. I'm going to, I'm going to shade, uh, let's see where I want to shade. I want to shade behind her tail here. So all my bristles go down on the surface. And I'm putting the paint down and pulling it across and swiping around using all the bristles. Okay, now that's on there. It's pretty wet. And I'm going to show you what a mop does. I could do this a lot less wet and I wouldn't need the mop. I'll show you a couple variations. But I just mopped up the water and that kind of... I don't know if you can see it. Um, you can go back and forth a couple times and get the the darkness that you want. I'm just using the colors that we had in the paint pots and maybe we would have um, used a little bit darker color um, if we uh, if we were designing this, which I didn't. So, I mean, I kind of did the color part. So now I'm going to take this, I'm doing the same thing and I'm going to put my brush down and swoop it up here and stop. And I'm just going to leave it. It's hard to say. I'm not sure if I'm going to turn the light this way and maybe it'll leave a better. There you go. You can kind of see the definition of color there. And I'm going back to my puddle over here that I've loaded because I still have lots of water on my brush. That's why I like this brush because it holds a lot of water so I can just reload right from my palette. And I'm kind of pity patting it down. And I'm going to join up there. And I made her a little fishtail. And I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of light. I don't know. I mean, let's see if I move it over here if you can see it. I'm going to continue. And as it after it dries, this is going to be the, the technique video that I'm going to do for floating. And I'm just going to float, 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 float. And you can play it back as much as you need to or whatever. I don't expect you to, to do this along with me at this point because this is brand new to you. I want you to play first. I want you to go into your bucket, tap. I want you to blot on your paper towel. Pick up that little piece of paint, like I said, on the corner of your brush. I think I'm still zoomed in. I'm going to zoom back out. Oops. Zoom back out. And now I have that ploop of paint on there. Put it down right where I've been going. Just keep putting it down right there. And work, go back and forth and work the bristles. Work all the bristles, not just the tip, all the way across the brush. So I go from dark paint to water. And if there's too much bu water bubbles, blot and then come back over. So if I blot, then come back over, it's still okay. It's still a uh, a worthwhile brush load right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on top of this starfish right here. I'm putting my bristles down, sticking the corner up against the starfish and pulling it across and pulling that paint and sticking my corner in there. I think if I'd have had a little bit of a darker paint, you might be able to see this a little better, but um, I'm just working with what we had kids. <laughs> I just wanted to get that off there. I'm just being a stickler. I don't know why. I don't even know if you can see that. As it dries, I think you're going to be able to see it better. Let me look at my original one that I did. I might have gone over that a couple times. So um, that might be the case. Now you need to let these floats dry. Each one needs to be completely dry before you go back and try to do that again because you'll pull off what you put down. This is um, a little bit of a, uh, a tedious, I guess not tedious because I enjoy it. I think of tedious as more like you're not enjoying it. <laughs> um, but you do need to, you just need to be patient. Make sure you're loading your brush cre uh, correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and shade underneath her arms now. So I'm putting that paint up into underneath her arms. I have a lot of paint on the brush. I think I'm trying to show you. Now I picked up the water edge and I'm just darkening in between her fingers and now I'm laying the water edge back down. 
This video will be more of a reference for you to go ahead and see what I'm doing, how I got that to, to look the way I did. So that's what I'm hoping this can be. Um, it's not for necessarily my subbies who um, are paper crafters, who, who um, are just watching me because you like to watch my videos, or, you know, it's not even for, um, I, I just want it, I don't know. I think what I wanted to do was, when you go on YouTube and you um, put in decorative painting, I did that. And I didn't really find a lot of this type of thing start to finish, take you through the process. I'm just going to put another little coat on my, um, uh, I need more orange, I guess, on my starfish. Um, so it's really for someone who is into decorative painting and they're not getting the direction they feel like they they might want oh my gosh that was a little messy going around my tripod i need more orange actually um so i just wanted to have this out there and then i'm going to get back to my um my other stuff unless you guys have questions or you you need help i mean i'm definitely hoping that i'm going to be helpful because like I said, I did this for years, and uh, I was able to do it because I didn't work. And, um, see, this got really light. It's way too light. I don't have orange. Um, a lot of ums, too. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> switch it to a so. Um, if you're not thinking that you want to really uh, learn about this, <clears throat> then maybe these aren't for you because it definitely takes practice and it it's something that becomes your kind of go-to craft you you just if you're a painter you're a painter a lot of times like you know but the great thing is is that when you do altered canvases or <coughs> um watercolor stuff techniques on your um cards even with pencils and things these techniques will come in handy for all that stuff because you'll know how to side load a brush and maybe be able to to do to fudge something in there that you didn't know you would before you know all right let me get some um dark flesh on my uh palette and maybe you'll be able to see that a little better i'm gonna try to float some of her face and her arms and you know what I'm gonna go ahead and use the number the half inch uh, brush this time and show you the difference if if there is any um, the difference would be that I don't have as much working room to work with this brush there's not a, as much space for water and all that stuff so okay I've corner loaded I'm going right to my run we call this a runway and I'm putting it down and I'm working the brush into the paint back and forth I'm loading the brush I'm making the paint go down the bristles until it's just water at this end and that's a very nicely loaded brush I blotted because I am a heavy hand and I put way too much paint on there so the first place I'm gonna go is right up here in her uh, little temple area and just swoosh this down right up under her hair go right over her eye and right kind of stick it in the corner did that show up any better yeah you can see that I'm just gonna mop a little bit just a little clean up that water line a little I mean that actually it's hard to see I don't think my lighting is the best either let's go in and do her little cleavage because you, you want to stay away from the area that you just did. You don't want to go and pity patting in there and pick up what you did. You'll be very mad. Because you might have a good float and then you just screwed it up. So we're going to just go into our little cleavage area here. I'm going to put my color. And I'm making sure all the bristles touch the surface. So you kind of have to tilt your brush. And I think the shade would stay down the inside of her arm. And I'm just going to leave it right there. And it kind of makes it look like an elbow almost. And just mop some of that water away. Smooth it away. Is that showing up better? Yeah, that's showing up pretty good. I'm going to rinse my brush out. Blot. Go into just a tiny bit of um, paint this time. Because I'm going to do under her hands, around her hands. 
and I'm going right back to this runway. We call it a runway. Pushing the water. Now wait. You can see a lot of water. I want to blot. There's too much water. I'm doing a little area here, so I want to make sure that I'm, um, I want to put this paint up against the starfish and kind of just stop there, and I'll use my finger to, um, kind of stop that line, and then we're going to go on the opposite side because this is, uh, so just to give it a little definition ar around her hand, it would definitely be darker and shaded there. Um, so I'm going to put a little color there. And this isn't like, you know, Picasso. This is kid, this is kind of, uh, what's it called? Like, um, you know, it's not a, a realistic painting is what I'm trying to say. I think my brain is a little off more than usual today. I'm definitely not feeling my best, but painting makes me happy so I can paint. And I'm going to just put this side of her face on because I think that other part has dried. So I'm just going to put that up there. So it's just a little shading. And it might look choppy a little bit to you, but once all the details go on and everything, it's, it's not. It looks good. Like, let's see. I mean, hers does kind of look a little choppy still. I think... Um, Depending on, oh, you know what else we have to do? Under her neck, right here, we have to make, give her a little, like, division where her chin stops and her neck starts. And I'm going to mop, mop, curb stop, mop that. So now she, you can see where her neck starts. And I don't know if I'm ready to go here yet because I'll interfere with that. So let's go back to our, um, to the bottom. I'm going to just, you know, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you won't mind watching me do this a couple times because I think that helps. I'm reloading in the dark green. That helps you understand what the process is. So I, I got a lot of paint because I'm going to put it down and I'm going to walk back and forth, back and forth into that color and get the paint to float across the bristles. I'm going to take a little water off my brush. This brush holds a lot of water. I went back to my big one and now I'm going to go over some of the places that we went already and I'm going to darken it up a little so you can actually see what I'm going for. Just shading the, t the little bottom of her fin and then I'm going to shade again right on top of where I did here so that uh, you can see where it separates here and again right under her hands I just got a little more paint because my brush has plenty of water see that's the thing that's why I like this big brush you don't have to completely reload every time rinse your brush because I'm a little lazy when it comes to that and you can put color down a little further because there's water on the bottom of the brush and you'll be able to, I don't know, I'm trying to describe it, but Kirby, stop. So I'm, I tried to bring that down a little further that time. Oh, I can't find my mop. But that's looking pretty good. I mean, you can see the definition, I guess. It's still a little hard to see in this light. When you move it aside, it works better. And I'm just going to do on top, uh, on top of the, um, I'm going into my paint. Kind of taking a little bloop from the paint. Going back to my runway and just putting it down and...